So it used to be maybe this was a one in a hundred year or even a, a 500 year event. Now they're starting to happen once a decade or maybe even once in a few years. And it's now so bad that the reefs don't have time to recover. You just got back from an expedition in the Maldives. What's the situation with the coral reefs there? Well, I was really shocked. I mean, Maldives has had some of the most beautiful reefs in the world. And normally a healthy reef should have on the order of 90% of the surface of the reef covered with corals. We've seen a dramatic decline in the reefs of Maldives over the last year, and many places now we're down to 5%. So we've basically seen the obliteration of many of the coral reefs in Maldives. Unfortunately, this is not a unique story for Maldives. It's something that we're seeing in a number of different tropical countries right now. And I think a lot of your viewers have probably already heard about the Great Barrier Reef. So last year, we lost as much as a third or so of the corals, particularly in the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef. This year, the central part of the Great Barrier Reef was hit really, really badly. And we lost, again, a very large part of the reefs there. So now it's really only the southern third that's in reasonable shape of the Great Barrier Reef. Now, that, that's a pretty shocking situation since this is such an iconic place. It's a World Heritage Site. It's, it's a place that lots of people uh, go to to experience the coral reefs for the first time. So record ocean temperatures caused the mass bleaching in the Great Barrier Reef, but what is causing these record temperatures? So I think we have to face up to the fact that it's the human behavior that's at the heart of this. You know, um, some of these corals are a thousand years old. So we know this has actually not happened on this type of scale for a thousand years. Now that's quite a long time. That gives us an indication that, you know, it really has to be associated with our behavior. If you look at how many of these years with extreme warm water temperatures that we have now compared to what we used to have, they're now occurring with much greater frequency. So it used to be maybe this was a one in a hundred year or even a, a 500 year event. Now they're starting to happen once a decade or maybe even once in a few years. And it's now so bad that the reefs don't have time to recover. So, you know, given enough time, most reefs will recover if there's still some healthy corals around. But in this case, we're now seeing less and less time for recovery, and that means the reefs don't bounce back. Now, in the Caribbean, we've gone uh, from 1970, perhaps as much as 60% coral in most places, to an average of 14% today. And in many places, it's less than that. Jamaica, for example, we're down to a couple of percent or so. Or Haiti is also very, very low. So we're now seeing you know, dramatic losses in many places. And this, of course, is really impacting uh, the ecosystem, but also the people that depend on it, and of course the tourism industry as well. So what actually happens to the corals when they've been bleached? So as you can see on this coral here, uh, you basically have a um, situation where the natural colors, which would be probably in some cases reddish or uh, bluish or, or greenish, have disappeared. And the coral has actually kicked out uh, the main uh, energy producer, food producer, which is an algae that lives inside the coral. And that's because they're stressed. And in this case, they're stressed because of water temperature. They could be stressed also because of too much nutrients, or there could be other factors that stress them. Uh, but in this case, it's related to uh, too much um, hot water over an extended period of time. Now, if this continues for another, let's say, three weeks or up to a month or so, most of these corals will die. And as you can see below, you have sort of algae growing over things. Now, most of that used to be live coral maybe a year earlier. They're all gone. Up in the left-hand corner, you have a more uh, massive coral. That one is actually still um, doing okay because it hasn't turned white like this or it hasn't been smothered by these um, uh, algae that's growing over it. But in fact, in many places now, we're on the slippery slope to slime. More and more of these reefs are they're not really coral reefs anymore, they are algal reefs and they have many characteristics which I think we as humans find less desirable. But of course also all the species that are associated with this lose their habitat, they lose their ability to survive. And we're now seeing decline of lots of other species that are associated with these corals. What other factors are affecting the reefs? So unfortunately, um, one of the, the main ones that we're, we're seeing, for example, the inshore areas of the Great Bear Reef, has been agriculture. So there's been a lot of runoff, either it be pesticides or it could be also fertilizers or it can just be smothering coming from um, the silts that builds up when you have agriculture. So most of those reefs were gone quite a while ago, 
So even before we saw this big climate signal and this climate impact, we had decline of many of these reefs. Of course, human sewage is another main source in some islands. Uh, it can also be associated with boat tourism, either great uh, cruise ships or even small um, ships that you know, pump out their sewage can have local effects. How is the tourist industry affecting the coral reefs? It could be that you have very poor swimming skills. So in some places, actually, people can't swim and they walk on the reef instead, which tends to be very destructive. You break pieces off, for example. Or like in this photo, this guy basically just holds on to corals. Um, you know, it's, it's just obviously bad practice. Now, depending on if you're there with a tour operator or someone who's actually guiding the, your experience, it's beholden on them also to take responsibility for you know, how their uh, tour is behaving and how you can actually change uh, bad behavior. So there are many examples of bad behavior by tourists that really have a negative impact. On the other hand, this is one of the biggest earners of um, money for tropical countries. So, you know, tourism is also one of the main reasons why countries protect their corals. So I think we should also recognize that, you know, we're dealing with trillions of dollars of value here that can be lost if the tourists behave badly but also are so important to the economy. And in many developing countries, this is the biggest income earner they have. Most small island countries, for example, are totally dependent on reefs for their economy. But even larger countries, uh, Mozambique, for example, where I've worked a lot, healthy reefs are incredibly important for the economy. So some of them have been lured into believing that uh, they can develop things like oil and gas or minerals and that that will be the big growth in their economy. Mozambique is now finding out that tourism, in fact, is the most important sector in their economy and one that they should be protecting more. Well, thank you so much for speaking on this topic and joining us in our studio. Thank you very much. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget to click back for more interviews like this. Goodbye for now.